We'd like to give you an opportunity to worship God this morning with your finances by giving back a portion of what God has entrusted to you. Tithing is an act of worship, and as followers of Jesus, tithing is an act of worship that we are called to do. Tithes allow us, as a church, to reach out and connect people to Jesus. So to give this morning, you can go and visit thegatheringottawa.com slash giving. Thank you for giving. Hey everybody, Jeff here, lead pastor at The Gathering Ottawa, and it's so good to have you tracking with us online here today. Uh, we post our sermons from our Sunday morning service online on YouTube every Sunday afternoon for two groups of people in particular. First group we post our sermons for are those of you who consider The Gathering your home, but you just weren't able to be with us for whatever reason on Sunday morning for worship. Maybe you're traveling for work, maybe you're on vacation, maybe you're sick, maybe you're immunocompromised and you're never able to come. Whatever your story is, for whatever reason it is that you weren't able to be with us on Sunday morning, these sermons are here for you. And we hope that this Sunday's teaching is a blessing to you in your faith journey, wherever it is that you're watching from. But the second group of people that we post these sermons for are those of you who are considering coming to the gathering, but just aren't sure yet. You're checking us out online and on YouTube to get a sense of who we are and what we're like and what our teachings like, what are some of the things that we talk about and all that kind of stuff. We recognize that most people nowadays will do that before going to a church. They'll go online and look to get a sense for what that church is like before ever checking them out in person on Sunday mornings. And so if that's you, we hope that these sermons being posted here are a help to you, are a blessing to you in your faith journey, and that maybe, just maybe, we will see you on a Sunday morning service sometime soon. We gather at 10.30 a.m. at St. FX High School in Riverside South in Ottawa. The address there is 3740 Spratt Road, and we would so love to have you join us as we worship Jesus together and open the scriptures together to become more like him together. Uh, we'd love to be able to walk with you and have you join us, not just online, but in person as well. Whatever the case though, whether you're already part of the, the gathering or just checking us out, if there's anything that we can do to serve you, to help you in your faith journey, we'd love to connect with you. Make sure to fill out our online connect card at thegatheringottawa.com slash connect so that we can follow up with you and walk with you in your journey of faith. If you're curious about how to give to the ministry of The Gathering, uh, you can check us out online at thegatheringottawa.com slash giving. There's information there about how to give. And if you're looking just for information about our church, maybe some events that are coming up and all that kind of stuff, all of that's on our website as well. You can find that at thegatheringottawa.com. For now though, we're just so privileged that you take some time to join us and to watch this Sunday's teaching and hope that the sermon from this past week is a blessing to you in your faith journey, wherever you find yourself in your journey of faith with Jesus. And we hope to see you soon on a Sunday morning in person. God bless you. Connect our lives, our hearts to 
our Heavenly Father. So maybe that's the answer for you. Maybe for others, it's whether you felt the most connected to God. It's been when you've gotten away and gone on some sort of retreat, Christian retreat or, or conference of some kind where you got away. Maybe it was to Trace Diaz. I know that's been a really popular retreat for many in our church or some other Christian retreat, a men's or women's retreat. You've gotten away to some campground and there was a speaker and a worship band and time together with other believers and you encountered God's love for you in a new and fresh way. Maybe it was getting away that was significant for you. Or maybe it was a mission trip. I remember for me as a young adult, uh, getting away after high school for a couple months to South America on a mission trip, and it was a super formative time for me. I experienced God's life and love in a profound way. It was a moment for me when I felt most connected to Him. Maybe for others, if you're a student, it was when you went off to camp, and you experienced God at camp, you felt connected to God at camp as you spent time with the, your, your new friends on, at the campground where you did all the fun things, canoeing and all that kind of stuff. You just felt really close and connected to God. For others, I, I hope that when we gather like this on Sundays, you feel connected to God here too. That as we sing songs of worship and open the scriptures together and spend time with one another, that we experience the life and presence of God in a fresh way each and every Sunday, that we feel connected to God. Or maybe it's midweek as we gather in our homes. Maybe that's where you connect most to God. Lots of different potential answers to this question. But I want you to think about the times in your life when you have felt most connected to God. For me, while there's no question that many of the things I just mentioned have been and continue to be huge for me in my experience of God's presence in my life, if I, if I had to narrow it down to just one thing, or one moment, or one practice where I felt most connected to God, it would be this. I would say that the moments I felt most connected to God are the moments I have been the most grateful. The moments I have felt most connected to God have been the moments that I have felt the most grateful. Specifically, they've been the times I've been the most intentional to express gratitude to God for who He is and what He's done in my life. But I don't always feel grateful, naturally. I have to be intentional about it. I don't know about you. Some of you are just far better human beings than I am, but gratitude doesn't come naturally to me. It's a choice. And so the moments I'm most intentional to express gratitude are the moments I feel most connected to God, which I know as I say that sounds somewhat obvious, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Sounds basic. Sounds simple. Well, of course, when we experience gratitude, we feel connected to God. But truthfully, this never really clicked for me until somewhat recently. The connection between gratitude and experience, experience of God's presence in life. I shared this before, but last year, early into my sabbatical, I took three and a half months last year, last summer, uh, to uh, ref be refreshed and just rest and recover from the chaos of life and COVID. It was a great gift that the board here gave to me. Sabbatical last summer, early into my sabbatical, I, I realized last year that I was more tired than I realized. I was exhausted. I know many of you were exhausted too, coming out of COVID. And, but also for me, the, you know, leading a church through COVID, and all the difficult things that we were navigating, I just felt so tired, so exhausted. And so as I started my sabbatical, I was all over the place spiritually. Just had a hard time turning my brain off and entering rest. You ever feel that way? You just kind of stop the thoughts. I, I was like on an adrenaline detox. You know what I mean? My body was just used to go, 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 and now I'm not going. I was like, what are you doing? This isn't right. And so I Early on, I said my staff went on a personal spiritual retreat all by myself to this beautiful bed and breakfast that Linda Cudmore told me about in Merrickville. I was kind of nervous about this. Like, I'm an extrovert, so going away for like 48, 72 hours, whatever it was, by myself, in some ways, kind of glorious, right? Sleeping in your own bed, no offense, Kim. Um, 
You know, not having the kids, all that kind of stuff, like just having some quiet. But on the other hand, it was kind of intimidating. Like, what am I going to do for like, 72 hours? How am I going to fill this time? And so I engaged a spiritual director. I don't know if you know what a spiritual director is, but a spiritual director essentially is like, um, it's, a, it's a spiritual kind of um, a help resource minister that can help people. They, they direct your attention to God in your life, help you to see where God is active in your life. It's almost like counseling, a form of Christian counseling of sorts. And so I asked my spiritual director for a resource. She said, how do I, what am I to do with this time off? What would you suggest? So she suggested that I work through this book called Alone with the Lord. Great resource, by the way, if you're looking to get away, it's like $10 on Amazon, Alone with the Lord, by Gordon T. Smith, when commended to you. So I ordered the book, went on my retreat, and started working through this resource. And it was fine. It was good. There's prayers in it and references to scripture and exercises that you can do. And so I was kind of working my way through it, but still feeling really restless, having a really hard time just turning my mind off and engaging with what God would have for me. But then I got to this particular exercise, page 20 of this book. It's kind of honestly mindlessly working through this. Then I got to this exercise. Let me just read it to you. Page 20 says this. The following exercise may help you approach the practice of thanksgiving. First, identify 10 things for which you are grateful. Ten indicators of God's goodness to you. And rather than listing attributes of God's goodness in the vague or general sense, consider specifically how God has been good to you and list those indicators in your journal. Okay, that's not hard. Ten things. I can be specific about ten things. And so I write ten things down. I thank God for His grace for me and Christ Jesus. I thank God for my family, for my wife and my kids, for our house. Thank God for the Buffalo Bills. You know, just the obvious things, right? Things we all are thankful for, I think. I do that and I continue on. After a few more, or a few moments of silence, identify ten more things for which to give thanks. How has God been faithful to you in the last few days or weeks? Be a little more specific and sort of to struggle to think of things a little bit, start searching for things to express gratitude for. You may through. After another three to five or three to five minutes of silence, the book says, identify ten more things for which you are thankful. And not like I'm at my gratitude limit. I have reached my gratitude quota. I have no more gratitude within me. I think that's it. But it's just to do it, and I'm a rule follower, so I'm gonna do this, right? So I start really digging deep and I start thinking back to specific ways that God has been good to me in my life. And I start thinking back on my story and I start thinking back to all sorts of things. I start journaling about those things, listening to them. I run out of things, up to three or four things, and I start thinking just about His goodness to my life in other ways. So even just practical things, like the ability to see and to smell and to hear and you know, summertime, just thank God for the feeling of the sun on your skin, which we just lost now, and we'll hopefully get back before too long. But thank God for the sound of laughter. Just heard a laugh. Thank you. Thank God for the gift of friendship and listed some friends who've been um, such an encouragement to me and just kind of went through this list and before I knew it, it wasn't just 10 more things, but it was about 25 more things. And for me, in engaging in this simple act of gratitude, 10 things, 10 things, and then 25 things, it was profound. Simple but profound. As this simple practice of looking for things in my life to express gratitude to God for especially when I'm not really feeling it, right? When I'm not feeling overly worshipful, not feeling super grateful, super connected to God. It opens me up to the life and the presence of God like nothing else had in a very long time. Ended up continuing to pile even more things after that and just went into this gratitude binge of expressing thankfulness to God. And you know what? 
Um, again, it's just almost embarrassed to say that at 40 whatever years old at the time that this was the first time I engaged in an intentional practice of gratitude, but it was, and it changed everything for me. It changed the way uh, I think. Whereas I continue, and I try to do this somewhat regularly, weekly or at least bi-weekly, make a list of things that I'm grateful for, it, it's almost rewired my brain to start looking for things in my life and in relationships to be grateful for. Because I've exercised that muscle or used my brain in that way, it's like now I can't help but search for things to thank God for, which leads to me feeling more connected and in tune with Him. And so this morning, in just a few moments, going to create some space for you, uh, us together, to create our own private gratitude lists before God. You can see in the chairs that there's a list of 10 things, but it doesn't, doesn't have to be limited to 10 things. If you're a rule follower like I am, I give you permission to add 10 more things in the back, or 20 more things, or 40 more things, or, or whatever, whatever you feel like to do. But we're going to create some space for us to intentionally express our gratitude to God for His blessings in our lives. And I, I want to encourage you, we're going to get there in a moment, but I want to encourage you to be as specific as you can. It's easy to say, God, I thank you for your goodness in my life. Don't just say, thank you for your goodness. Talk about how He has been good to you. Be specific. And that unlocks something. Oh, yeah, and then that led to this, and that led to that. And oh, my goodness, you see his goodness. You know, the psalmist talked about his goodness pursuing us all the days of our lives. And we get to see that reality, that truth, being present in your life. So we're going to do that in just a moment, privately thanking God. But then later on, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to open the mic as well. We're going to invite you to publicly thank God for his goodness and his kindness and graciousness to you. Maybe taking one or two of the things from your list and uh, testifying publicly to the goodness of God in your life. Because, I mean, I don't know about you, but when I, it's one thing to list my stuff, right? Things that I'm grateful for, but it's so encouraging to me to hear how God's been good to others, too. It helps me see that, man, He is faithful. He actually is to be said that He is. He's faithful and has been good and faithful to each and every one of us all the days of our life, even through some of the difficult things. But before we get to all that, what I want to do is I want to look at just two verses with you just briefly. So I think these verses will help shape the way that we think about the kinds of things that we put on our lists and the kinds of things that we might talk about a little bit later on as we open the mic. First passage is this. It's one of the ones that Colin read from James 1, verse 17. It says this. Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from our Father, not random, from our Father who created all the lights in the heavens and who never changes or casts a shifting shadow. James here in this verse, he says, whatever is good and perfect is a gift from God. A gift. You think about it. That for a moment. Like, I know life is not perfect and that it can be hard, sometimes really hard, cruel. Even like I, I know many of your stories, and I know how difficult life has been for some of you, and how difficult it can be to have an attitude of gratitude in the midst of some of the things that you're going through. I know life is hard. But honestly, if you have a roof over your head, and if you have a job or an income of some kind, if you've got clothes on, which thankfully as I look out, you're all dressed. This morning, thank you for putting on clothes. It's going to make my list later when I'm making my gratitude <laughs> things. Um, that's weird. Um, just if you're a guest here, normally people do wear clothes. It's not like an unusual. I don't even know what I'm talking about. But anyway, <laughs> Saturday again, guys. Gotta get back on track. You got clothes on. If you got food on your table, if you've got hot water when you shower, if you've got 
some measure of health, the ability to function in life, or people around you who can help you function in life, who you have friends and family, the church family, who love and care for you as you are. Most importantly, if you have the Holy Spirit dwelling within you, the life and presence of God Himself living within you, which if you're a follower of Jesus, you have God in you. Whoa! Like that's crazy. Even if your life is hard and it's it's hard for you to be grateful, you still have so much to be grateful for. Because we are all blessed beyond measure. And every good and perfect thing that we have in our lives, whether it's obvious or less obvious, it's a gift of God's grace. And sometimes we just got to take some time to step back and rewire things in our brain a little bit to see those gifts for what they are, to learn to look for things to be grateful for and some things to complain about and grumble about. That comes more naturally to me. It's hard though, isn't it, to be grateful? I said earlier, gratitude is a choice. I know we don't always feel it. I know it's easier to focus on the negatives in life and to complain, still things that are wrong and broken in our life, lives, and in the world. But like worship, gratitude is a choice that we make. And not only is it a choice, but listen to this, it's a skill as well. We don't often think about gratitude as a skill, but it is. It's a skill that we can develop and grow in, just like public speaking or, or cooking or playing hockey or whatever it is that you're trying to get better at, we can get better at gratitude. As we do it more, we get better at it. It's a skill that we develop and grow into. But it all starts, I think, with seeing every good and perfect gift as a gift from God. First passage, James 1, verse 17. What are you you think of the different gifts, God's grace, in your life, even as you just think back on this last week, few days even, ways that God's blessed you. So he has, you just got to see it. Second passage, real quick, I want to look at is from 1 Corinthians 4, verse 7. It's a similar verse to the James verse, where Paul, in writing to a really dysfunctional church, really dysfunctional group of Christians, group that had a ton of conflict and problems and things to complain about, and he's trying to deal with all these issues with them, kind of like us today in some ways. Um, he says this to this dysfunctional group. He says, what do you have that God hasn't given you? If everything you have is from God, why boast as though it were not a gift? You know, Sometimes, as educated, relatively wealthy Canadians, at least when compared to the rest of the world, we can deceive ourselves, can't we? To thinking that we have earned the good things that we have in life, right? That they aren't actually gifts from God, but that I earned it. I achieved this. That since we worked hard to get that grade or that degree, and since we worked hard to move up the ladder, at work, and since we worked hard to get things done to provide for our families, and since we worked hard to achieve this and that and the other thing, that we have somehow earned and we somehow deserve the good things that we have, whether we're talking about our material possessions or our success in life or whatever the case may be. But Paul says, speaking into this very mentality, he says, what do you have really that God has not given to you? If you think you've achieved or earned what you have, you haven't. Even your ability to work hard and to think and to learn and to grow and to study and to get better at things, to focus on stuff, all of that, everything that you have is a gift of God's grace. And you did nothing in and of yourself to earn that. Every good and perfect gift. The thing that we have is a gift from God. But we forget this, don't we? 
We forget this, we think that we've earned it. It's why this practice of gratitude is so essential to understanding the gospel. We've done nothing to earn God's kindness and grace to us in Jesus. It's all a gift of God's grace, and we are blessed beyond measure. And so this morning, we want to be intentional to engage in this practice of gratitude together in worship and as worship, thanking God for his many gifts in our lives. Because at the end of the day, that's what gratitude is, isn't it? It's worship. It's worship. It's not gratitude. It's not just some mindless exercise, empty exercise where we thank the universe or something for providing for us. Like we, I don't know how, if you are a follower of Jesus, that you can actually be grateful for anything. Who are you thanking? Yourself? The universe? Earth? Like apart from some dependence on God's goodness in our life, some knowledge of who he is, who are we directing our gratitude to? Gratitude is worship. It's a form of worship. It's directing our thanksgiving to God and worshiping him for who he is and what he's given to us in Christ Jesus. Whether we're talking about material things, spiritual things, or relationships, whatever the case may be. So in just a moment, I'm going to pray. I'm going to leave some space, five or six minutes, for you to respond to a list uh, in front of you on your phone, if you prefer, whatever works for you. And so list at least ten things, specific things that you are grateful to God for. And so I encourage you to wholeheartedly engage. Uh, I was reluctant when I got to this part in the book. Um, maybe you're feeling that way too this morning, but I promise you, if you press in, you'll experience God's presence. You'll feel more connected to Him because that's what happens when we express gratitude. Let me pray. Jesus, we thank you for your goodness in our life. Uh, thank you for going to the cross on our behalf and dying and rising again so that we could be set free and made new. But it didn't just end there. Your goodness follows us all the days of our life. Even when badness seems to be everywhere we look, your goodness is present. Help us to see it. Help us to see your gifts. The big things, the small things, the obvious things, the less obvious things, small things. Reveal to us your goodness in your life and give us the ability to express gratitude back to you here today. For all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.